Time to hand out some district championships. Lake Mary trying to steal one in a popka tonight. Timber Creek and Winter Park also playing host to a first round playoff game. And so was Lake Nona and Osceola. I didn't read that right. That's okay. We've got all of them and so much more right here yeah. on Football Friday Night. I'll get it right. And good evening. I'm Joe. He's Christian. This is Football Friday Night presented by McCoy Federal Credit Union. Tonight was the final night of district play. Yeah, guaranteed ticket to the postseason and home field for at least the first round on the line in several games, including our McCoy game of the week between Lake Mary and Apopka. Blue Darters had gone three district games without giving up a point, but Gunnar Smith and the Rams had enough firepower to end that streak. Rams were up 3-0 in the first, but then... Jaquan Lohman looks like he's bottled up, but if you've watched this show at all this season, you know he's a tough dude to bring down. Escapes for a 48-yard touchdown, 6-3 APK. Early second quarter now, Lohman scrambling again. Lobs this one up to Jaden Harrington, back of the end zone. Harrington, touchdown. Take a bow, young man. Blue darters up 12-3 at the half. Jump to the third. First possession for Popka. Lohman takes off again. Rams defense going to have nightmares chasing this guy, cruising up the sideline, just brushing defenders away. 47-yard TD, and it's 18-3 because they couldn't get any extra points. Next possession for Apopka, though. Rams finally get Lohman bottled up and watch the ref. Baby shark. Do, 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 do. That's a safety, and I've been waiting to do that all year. <laughs> but Hoka Hay comes right back in the fourth. Lohman with a short pass to Christian Bavel. Touchdown for the tight end. This one's starting to look like a blowout, but Lake Mary not giving up. Gunnar Smith finds his favorite target, Rocco Underwood, and that is the first touchdown scored against Apopka in four games. It is nowhere near enough, though. First play after the ensuing kickoff, Curtis Spivey missed the last two games with an injury. Looks like he's okay. Apopka picks up the 45-11 win, and Jeff Rolson gets the shower, leads the Blue Darters to an undefeated district title in his first season as head coach. Here's Shane White. Apopka is the district champion. The Blue Darters win tonight's winner-take-all game. They will host a playoff game two weeks from tonight. The Blue Darters had the lead at halftime, but then dominated the second half of the game. We wanted to be more comfortable at halftime. We, we didn't finish some drives. Uh, we had some poor field position in the first half. We dominated on defense. Um, but second half, we came out, and we wore them down, and we, we broke away from them. District champs has a nice ring to it. It does, you know, but there's ex expectations here at Apopka that, that exceed district championships. But we're really proud to win it, and it guarantees us a home field game in the playoffs, so we're blessed. 20 straight years in the playoffs. What is it about this school? It's, it's this community. It's the toughness that these, these, this community instills in their kids. It's the pride that this community has in its program, and it's the expectation these kids rise up to it, and they know that uh, we won't settle for anything less than their best. Apopka is in the playoffs for the 20th straight year. They've won three state championships, but never as a district champion. We'll see what happens moving forward. At Apopka High School, Shane Whitehead, football, Friday night on 9. Thanks, Shane. On the other side of Orange County, Timber Creek and Winter Park have been in the same district since 2005, meeting 14 times with the Wildcats holding an 8-6 advantage in the series. That includes three straight wins by Winter Park. So in a long, that's a long way of saying Timber Creek seniors trying to beat their oldest rival for the first time in their careers. Adrian Flores, just a junior, but he's going to do his part. He breaks away, and that wolf's going to howl 47 yards. Timber Creek up 7-0. Next possession for the Wolves. Jake Johnson finds an M&M, and it's a purple one. Marcus Manuel makes it 14-0 Timber Creek. Winter Park answers in a big way. Casey Case spinning another top 40 track, and it's Lizzo's Truth Hurts. Marcus Clark just took a DNA test. Turns out he's a 100% that dude. 
Wildcats back in this thing. So let's go to the second. A little controversy on this play. Timber Creek dials up the trickeration. Jake Johnson stretches for the goal line and the ball pops out. Winter Park says fumble. Timber Creek says touchdown. Refs say doctor, 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 doctor. That's a joke from a 1985 movie, kids. <laughs> touchdown. Wolves back up 20 to 7. Winter Park got it back right before the half, though. And guess who? Case to Clark. This one's only good for 44. Still counts as 7. This one close throughout, but Timber Creek hangs on 35-27, so they are your district champs. Wow. Lake Nona is firmly on the bubble in 8A Region 2. Lions entered tonight in eighth place, just two hundredths of a point ahead of Tampa Plant. But they could nullify all of that with a win against Osceola tonight. Cowboys hosting this district championship game. Let's go. First quarter, third down and nine for Osceola. Devon Wells rolling left, sets his feet, throws a strike to Dwayne McGee. McGoes the final 27 <laughs> yards all on his own touchdown Cowboys. Same score in the second now. Osceola facing third and long again, and Wells hooks up with McGee again. Six more for the home team. It's 14-0. Still in the first half, another third and long. This time, Wells just hands it off to McGee. And number six attacking the end zone like it said something about his mom. A 69-yard touchdown. Osceola strolling to a district title, 35-17 the final. In Brevard County, Vieira and Melbourne both undefeated in district play coming into this one. So winner gets a chicken dinner. Loser still has a chance as a wild card, though. Pick it up. Third play of the game. Melbourne's Justin Popovich picked off by Zach Taylor and the Hawks will set up in Bulldog territory. That leads to a short touchdown run by Jeremiah Housie, and it's 6-0 before the cheese on your nachos could coagulate. Let's go to the second, and it's that Housie fella again. Takes the sweep right. Yeah! Just enough room to squeeze into the end zone again. Makes it 12 0 after a failed two point conversion. Next possession for Melbourne. Popovich fakes the toss, tries the deep ball, but Housie is everywhere. He picks it off. Two touchdowns and an interception. That's a good night. He gets a good return, taking it all the way back to the Bulldogs 37 before he finally gets dragged down. Short field pays off for the Hawks again. Javel Francis tacks on another TD. Vieira, 19-0. So Bulldogs needing to get something going. Popovich tries the sideline. This time he finds the guy in the green jersey. Jalen Clark racking up the yards after the catch. Makes it all the way to the 10 for a 70-yard play. And three snaps later, Popovich connects with Jared Spragans, and the Bulldogs are on the board down 19-7. Vieira comes right back, though. Bryce Norton finds Housie. Of course he did. Diving catch at the 22-yard line. Next highlight, Norton throwing again. Not to Housie. Davis Mallinger diving for the pylon. Puts the Hawks on top by 19 again. And then late in the first half, Melbourne trying to make it a two-score game. Tries the trick play, but Cooper Davis isn't fooled. Pick six, third interception in the first half for the Hawks defense. And when the roosters are crowing and the cows are spinning circles in the pasture, Hawks fly together. Vieira wins 44-7. That's another old joke from a movie. <laughs> well, if you like suspense and drama, then you were rooting for East River tonight. The Falcons win over Winter Springs, coupled with a Lake Cow win over Lyman, would create a three-way tie. And we'd have to wait until next Saturday when the playoff points are revealed to find out who the district champ was in 7A District 4. If you prefer plain and simple, then a Winter Springs win gives them the crown in their first playoff berth since 2013. So here we go. Started out great for the Bears after a muffed punt by East River. Aaron Rodriguez punches it in. Winter Springs out in front early. East River answers though. James Lee on the fullback dive. He's going to rumble his way 39 yards. Gets all the way down inside the 10 before they drag him down. A few plays later, fourth and goal from a yard out. Graylin Holland. I'm not so sure he got there, but he convinced the only guy that matters. That guy. Touchdown Falcons, and we're tied at seven. Head to the second. Winter Springs started to wear down that East River defense. It was like three yards in a cloud of dust, but it was muddy. After a couple fourth down conversions, Luke Morgan caps the 17 play drive, puts the Bears back in front. So it was East River's turn now, and they found some success through the air early on this drive. Jason Dozier, nice job extending the play. Hits Graylin Holland. Unfortunately, the turf monster got him at the 50, and that would come back to bite him. A few plays later, Dozier going to force this one in double coverage. R.J. Mays, looking like Willie Mays, the say-hey kid, takes the interception back out to the 40. 
Bears back in business, and they just rode the legs of Aaron Rodriguez. I think he had about 85 carries in the first half. My math may have been off on that, but on fourth and goal from the one, I guarantee you they go back to him. Bears win it 40 to 13, and they are your 7A District 4 champs. Let's go to Class 2A. Bill Gerke getting another shot at his 300th win, leading Orangewood against Trinity Christian. Third quarter, Rams already up 18-8, but Eagles take a chunk out of that lead with a hard-fought touchdown run. Trinity down three, still in the third. Here goes Kaderis Roberts. You'd have an easier time catching a greased up chicken in a dark barn. Every time we show Orangewood highlights, he's in the end zone. Rams back up 10. Then it was time to put this one to bed. Levi Mitchell wants to throw the ball, but he tucks and runs instead. Another touchdown for Orangewood, and the legendary Bill Gerke joins the 300-win club as his team takes it 39-21. Gerke, 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 Gerke. I'm the lucky one. I'm the lucky one. I got to keep coaching out here. Okay. Thank you all for coming. Okay. It means a lot, okay, but we got a game again next week. I got five days to get ready. Okay. Thank you all very much. I okay. appreciate it very much. Five days is a long time. Take a moment, coach, and celebrate. Congrats on his 300th win. That is very cool. Cool is the word I'm going for. <laughs> yes, cool. always humble and goes for 301 next week. Yeah. All right, coming up, math works. a rivalry game plus district implications in Daytona Beach. And could Lake Mineola knock off undefeated Springstead to clinch a spot in playoff land? Plus, Wakaiva looks to further bolster their spot in the RPI ranking. Someone was using a thesaurus today. We'll get to all of that, but first, round one of tonight's Battle of the Bands. They're white and orange, and I actually don't think anything rhymes with orange. It's the Boone Braves marching band. <laughs> Mainland has owned football on the world's most famous beach. They've reached the playoffs in 25 straight seasons, and they've beat crosstown rival Seabreeze each of the last nine years. Tonight, they had a chance to extend both of those streaks. A win for the Bucs would mean another district crown. First quarter, Mainland in the red zone. Isaiah Gordon barely even gets touched on this 18-yard stroll. Buccaneers planting their flag in the end zone first. Next drive for Mainland. Teron Keith, he wants to throw the ball. Tries really, really hard to find someone open. It's just not going to happen. So he takes off, weaving through red jerseys, finally taken down at the one-yard line. Very next play, Gordon steals all his glory with his second TD of the night. Go to the second quarter because I said so. Keith back to pass again on second and seven. Theodore Lockley is going to get all seven and more. Going Pickle Rick on the defense. Lockley with a play of the week nominee. Pickle Rick! Rumbles away for a 64-yard touchdown. It's 20 to nothing, Mainland. One more highlight from the Bucks now. Keith rolling out, finds Sam McKenzie open near the end zone and then in the end zone. Mainland dominates their crosstown rival 44-0. Elsewhere in Volusia County, DeLand won the all-Bulldog brawl 14-7 over Flagler Palm Coast. DeLand was in fifth place in 8A Region 1 entering tonight, so they have likely secured a wild card spot. FPC was in fourth, so they'll have work to do against Haggerty next week. Dropping back down to 6A, Lake Mineola has some dudes. When you watch their games, they look the part. And if they acted the part tonight, they'd end a six-year playoff drought. Mineola hosting undefeated Springstead. Only one of the Eagles' eight wins, though, came against a team with a winning record. Pick it up second quarter, and I told you the Hawks had some dudes. Exhibit A, Chiore Maglore jukes two Eagles out of their feathers, then Gets the sideline and just hurdles another defender as he crosses the goal line. That was fun. Lake Mineola takes a 13-7 lead. Springstead comes right back. Max O'Rourke. No idea if he's related to Beto, but his arm, rather presidential. That's Paxton Chansey. Gets down near the red zone. Later on that drive, Anthony Alexis will cap it off with a touchdown. Eagles take a halftime lead, 14-13. In the third, after a Springstead fumble, Devin Cole somehow... Gets it in there to Trent Logan, and the Hawks are back in front. Later in the third, McGlure again. Go, go, gadget arm. Got it. Lake Mineola wins 26-21 and bring home their first district title in school history. 
At Wakaiba, Mustangs in good shape entering this week. Fourth in 7A Region 1. Going after a few more of those RPI points against South Lake. First drive of the game. Eagles trying the field goal, but Kendall Wilson can fly. A long drive ends in no points for South Lake. Eight plays later, they're going to hand it to Amari Thomas. Wiggling through the line. And the A train, choo choo, pulls into the end zone. Mustangs grab a 7 0 lead. Next time they get the ball, Wakaiba used to have a live horse run on the field during pregame. And if you ask that horse if it liked this play, it would say nay. Big run for Chad Davis Jr., but he fumbles it away. Eagles then go on a grinding 17 play drive and tie the game with a nice touchdown pass, is what I would have said. But Azion Scott comes down with it. Interception keeps the Eagles off the board. Three plays later, Wakaiba trying to score before the half. Larry Preston. If Harry is short for Harold, why isn't Larry short for Laryl? Anyway, he's intercepted <laughs> by Troy Shirley. So Wakaiba goes into the half up 7 0, goes on to win 36 0. Should be enough to get the Mustangs into the playoffs. How do you know it's not short for that? I guess it could be. Over to the first Academy Royals trying their to keep their playoff hopes alive, hosting a Kellens Angels Christian Academy. Not so fun to say. First drive of the game, Lake Ellis, a bit easier. Looks like he's wrapped up for the loss. Wiggles free, gets down to the one. That's okay, though, because on the very next play, that's going to be Terrence Mosley. The second takes care of the final yard, eight zip Royals. Did you know 70% of the earth is covered by water, the other 30 covered by lake? Doesn't make any sense. No, Lake Ellis with the interception. Returns it all the way down to the 20. Couple plays later, Lake just drowning the Wildcats. This time he doesn't share with his buddy Mosley. Keeps the touchdown all for himself. Royals led 18-8 at the half, going to win it 39-8. to Little Thursday night football now. Okoe hosting West Orange. Warriors needed to win if they wanted to keep their playoff hopes alive, and this will bring him to life. Tyler Huff finding his favorite target, Jalen Carleys, and he breaks the tape in record time. Looks like Usain Bolt. 7 0 Warriors in the second. Here come the Knights. Charles Pierre. Oui, oui, monsieur. Goes 30 yards for the touchdown. And like any good superstar, he knows where the camera's at. Right there. Puts Okoe up 15 7. Then right before the half, Huff, he knows where to go with it. Back to number two. Who does number two work for? Unfortunately for Carleys and West Orange, they lost by a deuce. Okoe goes on to win it 22. To 20 nights can finish the year with a 500 record if they beat freedom next week all right coming up it's the best of the best from week 10 of the high school football season plus we're bumping setting and mostly spiking with our ftc scholar athlete of the week but before all that the bands need to battle they're blue and white and it's almost midnight it's the apopka blue darters marching band <laughs> So I checked and this is the last football Friday night before Halloween. So how about a little early trick or treating? It's all treats when it comes to the precision plays of the week. Let's start with last week's winner. Apopka's Jaquan Loman in their win over Evans proves once and for all that the Loman always wins. And yes, as long as he's the blue darters quarterback, we will be using that joke. Play number one from Lake Mineola, Kiore McGlore. I hope I pronounced that right because this play worthy of proper pronunciation. Hits the juke button on a couple dudes and then just casually leaps over another one as he hits pay dirt. If I got it wrong, I'm sorry, Kiore. <laughs> play number two was a gift of athleticism from Theodore Lockley. Looked like he was playing this game on rookie mode, shaking multiple tackles, then sprinting away for a 64-yard touchdown, helping the mainland Buccaneers clinch yet another district title. Play number three comes to us from Bill Gerke's 300th win, and he can thank Kadaris Roberts for at least a handful of those victories. Roberts, a weekly contributor to the Football Friday Night Highlights, and tonight does a little extra work and gets into our precision plays of the week. Well, if you've got hope, you've got a chance. If you've got hope, Matchner, you've got more than a chance. Shane Whitehead has more now on the Winter Springs Volleyball Star. This week's scholar athlete is Winter Springs Volleyball player Hope Matchner. The senior outside hitter has impressive numbers in the classroom and on the court. She leads Class 6A in kills this year and has more than 1,000 point scoring plays in her career. Hope also has 1,000 plus digs in her four years at Winter Springs. Do you know your own stats? 
sometimes. I think I've paid attention to them more this year because they've been better this year. Do you know during a game that your numbers are racking up? Um, sometimes, depending on the team. I never think they're as high as they actually are, but then they end up being that high. So <laughs> She is an all-around volleyball player. She can do just about everything. She can pass, she can swing, she can motivate her team, and I'm just very impressed by her demeanor and her tenacity to win. 4.4 GPA, so she takes it pretty seriously. Yes, yeah, she takes it very seriously. She's very serious about grades and the sports. She will even miss a part of practice if she feels that's necessary in order to keep her academics very strong. What does your future look like in this sport? Um, I'm hoping just to go to college, play my four years, and then hopefully not get hurt, no red shirt injuries, and then retire. <laughs> Hope is being recruited to the next level, wants to attend and play at a school out of state. She led Winter Springs to a regional quarterfinal win earlier this week. She had 17 kills and 14 digs. Hope Matchner, our Scholar Athlete of the Week. And that win for Winter Springs in the quarter sets up a showdown with Strawberry Crest on Tuesday. Winter moves on to a regional final. Now time for some more bands. The Deland Marching Bulldogs. Welcome back. Good night all around for Apopka. In addition to the Blue Daughters District title, APK native Zach Granke pitched well tonight in the World Series. Yeah, went four and two thirds, only gave up one run, so he didn't last long enough to get the victory, but Houston does still lead it 4-1 in the night. That's going to do it for us. Good night, sports fans.